Hey, it's another video. Welcome. My name's Tim and this is Slider Drift. In today's video, this is a special one for me because I'm hacking Starlink. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or if you're from Russia, Starlink. Today we hack Starlink dish. The motors we don't need. This is actually a really good one, really passionate about because the dish that I have got has got this leg sticking out of it with a motor and from what I see you don't really need it there's so many satellites up there now um, and if it makes my internet just a little bit slower I would much rather that weird leg not sticking out not have moving parts at back there and also the router as well you got to plug it into the wall and I don't want to take up another socket and also have the 240 volt side on when I don't need to to save power, mainly in the winter. In the summer, I have heaps of power. I have heaps of power in summer. Okay, no more Russian. In this video, I'll remove the motors, give you guys a template of how to remove the motors yourself safely based on what I've done. And also, I'm gonna hack the router because the router works off 12 volts and 48 volts. So I'm gonna hack that. And so it's just plugged into my 12 and 48 volt system. And I fix the Starlink somewhere on the back of my dodger, hard dodger. All right, today we learn. <laughs> Instructions, point at the sun, plug in your router, download Starlink, pretty simple. Put the router here, and this is the bloody notorious proprietary cable. Look how big that is. I'd have to drill a hole that big into the boat. There is vent holes. There's two on this side of the motor, and then there's one, two, three, four on this side. And so from that alone, I can have a look at these teardowns that I've seen on the internet and marking out where I think I should cut. And then obviously I'm gonna go super shallow and super slow and try and cut it all open. Obviously if I cut a cable, I can just repair it. So that's not a massive drama, but I couldn't find exactly exactly where to cut these and where's ideal. So that's what I want to give to you guys. I'm really nervous. Okay, I've just got this tiny little, I guess it's a sort of a router bit. Let's see if this works and cut this thing open. Okay, it's just going through and sometimes just barely going through, which is exactly what I want. So this is all cut. I sort of finished off all the little bits with this tiny little Dremel bit. It was all very controlled. I feel like with the Dremel, it was very controlled. I could see exactly how deep I was going. Yeah, it wasn't too bad at all. So there are lots of little ribs still connected. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up, but there's one there, one there, this one over here, three, four, five, six. So a total of six ribs still connecting it. And now what I've got to do is just cut right down those ribs. So I'm gonna try this little router bit again. I actually don't think I've cut any of the wires, but whew, look how close that one is. Okay, I've just modified the cutout template for you guys, assuming your one is exactly like mine, which it should be. So you can reference because there's four vent holes on the bottom, two on the top, and you wanna go seven mils in from the outside hole at the top right to the inside hole here, seven mils in. So you're seven mils in there, straight line, to the inside hole, straight line to the inside hole, then a straight line from the inside hole to the inside hole on the left hand side here. I didn't cut the cable, but um, but it was pretty close. And I think to be a little bit more safe, you could go a bit wider here. So just inside the vent holes here, I've drawn another line. So it's maybe two mils from the inside of the holes here and to there and then here we're on the outside hole to seven mils from the outside hole of here if you guys are going to do something similar i hope that helps clearly it's got two motors this is power cable for one motor 
power cable for the other motor and then we have our ethernet cable so for those of you if you're going to do the same and you live on a boat that are worried about salt air getting inside here it's supposed to be sealed i might put a bit of extra silicon there and there to really uh, hammer home that ceiling but um, this is all vented anyway these are little vent holes so salt air is going to be getting in there anyway it's supposed to be sealed from the electronics inside here which is why I sort of went with this approach <sighs> Now you can see that right there is the connector that I want to get out. So that was actually quite easy comparatively. <laughs> These tiny little bits here, I broke that off and that off. I literally just pulled it apart. One thing that I didn't do, uh, maybe check to see if your dish works before you do anything to it because um, you cut into it and then it doesn't work. You're not gonna know. So yeah, check to see if it works before you do anything like what I've done. Booting, booting, booting. So everything is set up and working. Schmickle schmackle, I've named my Wi-Fi Schmickle schmackle. Okay. While it's early, I'm going to move on to this router and see if I can get this bit of front glass off so I can run this off 12 and 24 volts. The dish uses 48 volts and the router uses 12 volts. Power supply is stepping it down into those two voltages for those two individual things. So you do need both if you want to do this, 12 and 48 volts. I have 12, I have 24, I have 48 volts. So that's going to be sweet as. The main reason I am doing this is because I don't want to take up yet another power plug. I ideally want to get to the stage where all the 240 volt stuff is obviously non-essential and I can program my multi plus into seeing a certain certain amount of standby power and if it does that it turns off and it sort of checks it intermittently like once a second or something like that to see if there's any anything's turned on can essentially put my inverter into low power mode when it's um when it realizes that it's not needed so i do eventually want to get to that as well there isn't any screws or anything like that i'm gonna try not break this glass ideally i want to put it back in but if i snap it not the end of the world, not connected to anything. It's just a shiny bit of glass. That was actually a pain in the ass. So the easiest that I found was two butter knives, two butter knives and a uh, Stanley knife or blade, and then just cut away everything that you can and then slowly pry it open and see if you can cut away a little bit more. And the case and the glass was actually tougher than I expected. Okay, now that this is open, obviously it's just sort of laying down so you can get the orientation. You can see this green board coming through here. These eight little pins here, these header pins are as follows. So from the top, uh, left to right is earth, ground, 12 volt, the white LED, and then on the bottom row is 48 volt, 48 volt, ground, and blue. What I'm going to do is wire one 48 volt wire. Um, I'm going to solder them to both of these. So I'm going to go across these bottom two down here. And then for the ground, I'm going to use this top one. So I'll come in from the top here and solder it to that. And for the 12 volt is this third one on the top row over here. Um, the little header pins that are coming through the, the little Wi-Fi board are just so small and my wire is probably a bit oversized as well um, that, yeah, it's just not making a very good connection. So as you can see, that is no longer attached. I'm not surprised. So my 12 volt just pulled off quite, <laughs> quite easy as well. The 48 volt one, because it was going over two little headers, actually was pretty good. Radio, now I just got to figure out how to take these little plastic rivets out.
with <coughs> with these four one two three four i used an oversized bit but this little one just down in here that little one there yeah i'm gonna take a lot more finesse with that one and use a smaller bit too So this here is the Wi-Fi board. Um, and this is the power board. You can see the little labeling there of these, these pins. I've never pulled apart circuit boards or soldered onto circuit boards. If other people can do it, we can too. Um, and that is essentially my mentality when it comes to ev everything. I really have a tough time thinking of any task and not imagining um, imagining that I just couldn't do it. You know, like with enough time and resources, I do feel like I can do anything. Um, and if other people are doing it, it means I can do it too. I'm not 100% sure, I'm not an electronics expert, but it, depending on how long ago you have it connected to power, there's probably probably capacitors and other stuff going on inside there. So maybe someone leave it in the comments, like how how long do these like capacitors hold their charge for? Okay, here's a zoomed in view of what we're looking at on the power board. My GoPro didn't really do it justice because it was all a little bit blurry, so we'll try to do it this way. These are the eight pins that were sticking up through the Wi-Fi board that I tried to solder to. We're gonna do the exact same thing and solder, but instead of soldering to the pins, we're gonna solder it to this actual board. Here's a little schematic of the eight pins if you need it for reference. So what we wanna do is we wanna scrape some of the solder mask away here, in this section here, up at the eight, and over here where it says J2. These little sections correspond to here, is ground which corresponds to these two pins as we know this section here is with the eight that we've scraped away is the 48 volt section and that corresponds to these two pins and over at the j2 we've scraped a little bit of the solder mask away and that's a 12 volt section and that corresponds to this third pin up here double check for your reference with a multimeter and a continuity test between the ground and these two pins between the 48 volt and these two pins and between the 12 volt and this one pin up here. Once you've gone ahead and done all this and checked your continuity and are happy, go ahead and solder your ground wire. Go ahead and solder your 48 volt wire and also solder your 12 volt wire. Once you've done all this, I suggest you check continuity one more time just to be safe and it's that simple. I'm gonna try every other one as well and make sure they're not um, going across any other pins. And good. Another hot tip is to have your wires running the same as what I've got here. And that way when you put the Wi-Fi board on and the heat sink, you'll be able to squeeze the wires in between them without too much fuss. Okay, now I have to try and get the Wi-Fi board back over these little headers inside all of this stuff. And I've also got to try and get the heat sink on. So let's try and do that. This is fine, the header pins are coming through the Wi-Fi board um, as much as they did. Now I want this Wi-Fi board to stick in place. I'm just gonna glue it in place. It's my glue gun, I've never actually used this before. First time using a glue gun. <laughs> Can you tell? That was more difficult than the soldering. There is my final product. Now I'll just go hook it on. Okay, for now I've just cheated and put these connectors on because if it isn't working in the future or whatever, I want to be able to take it off. I will actually put some better connectors on, but for now that should work fine. Check this out, too friggin' cute. We have so many swans around here at the moment. It's basically a plague. We've got a plague of swans. I've got this, it's called Eco Deck. It's just basically plastic. I've got the grinder out and I've made this perfect 
sort of laminate and concurve just kept on smashing it with the grinder and then eventually got this curve and now all I have to do is sicker flex it into place I got these bolts through here so I'm gonna sicker flex the Starlink to these little bits of plastic laminate and bolt it all down onto the bimini so that the whole thing can be removed if like the weather gets hectic or if there's hail or something like that Okay, time for that game of cutty cutty solder. Oh yes, first time. Oh, that did not happen last time. It was a pain in the ass to come out that tiny little hole. Got the two ends of this. Now I just gotta solder them back together. There should be some shielding in there as well. So what I'm gonna do is cut it maybe all the way back to here and keep that shielding intact. And then uh, solder them together and do some heat shrink and put the shielding over and it should work. I'm not sure what this little wire is here. It's either probably, probably an earth wire I would say. So I'll have to solder that back on as well. The good thing is these wires are so thin I can use my crappy little battery solder. little bit of plastic here is around all the wires and this little wire which I suspect is the earth wire is on the outside of that in between the shielding and the plastic all right see if it works see if it works redundant cable look how much there it is overkill Oh look, there's one that says Starlink right there. What are the odds of that? Radio. I'm in the Tweed River right now. Let's just do a speed test. And it's given me 47 download and about 12 upload, which is pretty damn good. Um, I see this fluctuate. I've seen this fluctuate from anywhere to above 200 all the way down to like five. Um, I'm not sure if this is a product of the dish not being able to move or it's just normal. Basically, it just it just fluctuates. It fluctuates to insanely good speeds and back down to basically mobile speeds. Um, it is pretty crazy that I have never had home broad broadband before and the first time in my life. So up until now, I've always had to hotspot my phone ever since phones began because I've been such a gypsy and it is crazy that the first home broadband that I've ever had in my life is through satellites on a boat. <laughs> if you guys are thinking of doing something similar, I would say absolutely go for it. Yes, it's going to be very daunting cutting into your brand new Starlink and doing all the soldering and stuff, but I am not very good at soldering. And that second method where you're actually pulling the Wi-Fi board up and scratching a little bit of the solder mask off, that was really, really simple. So if you can solder at all, I would highly suggest you just take your time, you do that. There's nothing that I did that I that I couldn't reverse. Everything's working perfectly. Um, there's no reason why you can't do it as well. There is one thing that I haven't done yet, and that is this. This is just a relay, a DIN, DIN rail relay that I got from electrical wholesaler, and that has a 12 volt coil and can switch up to 250 volts. Um, so I'm going to use this. So that one switch that I've got for Starlink, which is obviously 12 volts, when I turn that on, that can also power this relay and power on the 48 volt side of the Starlink. Um, so I haven't installed this yet, but I definitely will. And that's what I have it for. So you might want to do this as well with your installation. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much if you've made it this far. Um, and if you got something out of this video, maybe consider liking, subscribing, and share it to literally everybody you know. Okay, that's it. Catch ya, bye.